What's happening y'all? This is Alexander with Guns.com and today we are going to take a look at a firearm that is named after an element on the periodic table. We're going to get into this and see what makes it unique. This is Poland's 545 AK that came into fruition in the late 1980s. It wasn't adopted until 1991. Poland was a part of the Warsaw Pact during the Cold War. It was kind of a Soviet aligned nation. Uh, which means most of their firearms fell in line with what the Soviets were doing. And in the late or mid 1980s, they wanted to make the change to the 545 cartridge. They went into kind of the design table to come up with what would ultimately be this design. Uh, this is the Polish Tantal or uh, the WZ88, uh, because that is when it was kind of finalized, it was 1988. WZ stands for Vizor, I believe, which means model. Um, but we're going to get into what makes this unique. So this is more of an AKM and, and a little bit less of an AK-74. Poland has a really good reputation and all of their AK, AK variants are known for being well made, good quality, great parts. Uh, this particular one is imported by Century Arms. It has a lot of unique features. So what we're going to do is we're going to start from the tip and we're going to go rearwards. We have what appears to be an AK-74 style uh, chamber break. Um, however, it's a little bit longer and a little bit different from what you would see on the typical AK-74. The reason for that is the poles were still using rifle mounted grenades. So you would mount a grenade there, throw in a blank and launch those grenades. And this particular muzzle device is designed for holding on the rifle mounted grenade. Uh, very cool because the Russians had gone on to under the barrel or uh, under mounted grenade launching systems as did the Americans. Um, fairly early on, you know, back in the in the 70s. Uh, so, so seeing rifle launch grenades this late, getting into like 1990, is, is an interesting, almost archaic design that was still included in this system. Moving back from there, you have your traditional AK uh, front sight post with a bayonet lug on the bottom. This particular one uh, actually has weld marks on those bayonet lugs so that you can't mount a bayonet and the stock is also welded so that it would be legal in several states that it normally would not be legal in. Um, however, if, once you kind of move back from there, there is a little bit of a different contour or profile to the barrel because it was made for launching grenades. We get to this gas system and like I said, this is more like an AKM style of gas system. Uh, it does not necessarily have that 90 degree block. You still have that like 45 degree swoop, which you would see on the AKM series and later would be eliminated with the AK-74M uh, when they would go to the 90 degree gas block. One of the things that's very unique and distinguishable about the Tantal is this mismatched front furniture set. And a lot of people think like uh, somebody got a hold of this and they put, you know, two different mismatched furniture pieces on there and that's actually not true. Uh, this is how it would have come from the factory. The top is almost like a plastic or a plum polymer while the bottom is traditional Bakelite. Uh, very interesting is the top is not compatible with any other AK uh, top handguard parts. So if you wanted to replace this, uh, you're kind of stuck with what's on there unless you were to have something custom made for it. While the bottom is just kind of a standard AKM furniture piece, you can get different lowers or different lower hand guards and throw them on there. Moving back from there, you have your traditional rear tangent sight. It's a ladder sight, goes all the way out to a thousand meters. A little more practical with the 545 over the 762. However, probably not going to be shooting on iron sights at a thousand meters. And you can see that there is something different about the firing system. There are actually three different fire modes for the military service um, rifles. There was single shot, three shot burst, and full auto. This is the only AK that I am aware of that has a three shot burst uh, option. The rest of the AKs that would have burst options like the AK-12 uh, are two shot burst. And interestingly enough, this is also cool because the selector is separate from the safety. So on this side of the firearm, you have your traditional safety. That's safe. Once you move that down, you're in the fire position and you can operate that bolt to the rear. That does not control, however, your firing sequence. 
So separate from the safety, you have your selector switch. And you would be able to move this to one of the three positions, either single shot, three shot burst, or full auto. And once you threw that selector, or once you threw the safety lever down, uh, whatever position this is in is what the gun would then fire in. Now, because it was imported and it's a semi-automatic firearm, this kind of operates as just an extra safety. When you move the safety on the other side, it does move that lever. Um, so you can kind of just move it to operate the safety, but that's not how it was originally intended. Moving back from there, we have this really unique folding stock, which is incredibly uncomfortable. But the story behind it is pretty interesting to me. They wanted stocks that folded. Um, however, they did not fit into the normal racks on the personnel vehicles or in the barracks or wherever. You wanted something that would fit on the equipment that you already had, so they quickly developed this folding wire stock, which is supposed to be the same length as you would get on the normal wood or polymer stocks from the previous AK series. And they're kind of iconic for being not very comfortable, not the greatest stocks in the world. Normally, you would push up or down on this uh, lever here, and the stock would fold to the side, but like I said, it has been welded in place because uh, it makes it legal in states that it would not otherwise be legal in. The final kind of cool piece about this is obviously it is chambered in 545. I'm a huge 545 fan. Uh, I love the cartridge. Really soft shooting. Got to take this out on the range. Like I said, I own a Tantal, um, so as far as shooting goes, I probably have more 545 rounds on this particular platform than any other platform. And when you shoot side by side with a normal AK, you can really tell the difference. So easy to shoot control pairs to go through shooting different drills, uh, really light recoil impulse, easy to stay on target, and typically AK sights are a little bit more difficult to pick up, so once you get onto them, you know, you don't want it jumping around too much, uh, where it takes a little bit of effort to, to find that, you know, front post and fit it back into the notch, and it's just a lot easier to control with 545 than what you would get off of 762 Soviet. The last interesting piece of information is that the rifle series is named the Tan and that's because the Poles named all their firearms after elements on the periodic table. Uh, so this is named Tantal after the, the element Tantalum. Later on, it would be replaced by the Beryl, which was a 5.56 AK, which is after Beryllium. Uh, but just an interesting way to kind of name the, uh, the rifle series that went through. But that is one of the coolest AK variants that's out there on the market. This Polish Tantal is just one of the many things that we've gotten from our We Buy Guns program here at guns.com. We have one of the largest selections of used firearms out there, and uh, be sure to check it out. Thank you again, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe.